So I am Troy Sandberg. I joined the Paulson Lab in 2013 as a PhD student, and I finished my PhD last year and transitioned to a postdoc. And a big part of my PhD was developing these robotic systems in our lab that let us run adaptive laboratory evolution experiments, which we'll be talking about today. Yeah, and I'm Adam Feist. I'm a scientist here in the lab. Um, I've been at the lab for a number of years, both as a grad student and now as a scientist um, for almost a decade. I've uh, been working with uh, Lab Evolution for quite a number of years and uh, help lead the team here in our um, uh, Lab Evolution efforts. So ALE is what we call adaptive laboratory evolution and that is a way of evolving microbes in the laboratory and studying them and how they evolve and you can use that to obtain particular microbial properties that you want. So you start off with just a tube of nutrients that the microbes can grow on and then as they grow the culture gets dense uh, because now there are trillions of cells in here. And ale works really well in microbes because you can get trillions of cells in a tiny little flask. Uh, they rapidly divide, they accumulate mutations, and so essentially what this is doing is performing a calculation that our best supercomputers could not possibly do because in a single tube of growth we are sampling hundreds of millions of mutations and they, as they grow the bacteria are competing against each other and whichever ones happen to have adaptive mutations will take over the population and then we can isolate those and use them for various purposes. Yeah, so we decided to write this review on uh, the different uses of ale as uh, there's a growing body of literature uh, around using lab evolution uh, for various industrial purposes and discovery, and we felt uh, it was a good time to put this information together and kind of share the different uses and applications uh, that have been enabled and give you know specific use cases of uh, what you learn uh, from this process and how to leverage it for different strain design purposes. Right, so you know, evolution's been around from the beginning of time. Um, lab evolution uh, has been around probably um, since the turn of the century. There is a number of studies that have been reported uh, in the 40s and 50s of you know propagating cells, training cells to different environments, and what you're really doing there is lab evolution and selecting for mutations um, which are uh, outcompeting their uh, original genotypes. Um, uh, and have beneficial properties uh, that you're um, interested in. Yes, yeah, so this is just a little summary of the ale process where you have these tubes of growth and as the bacteria are growing you get mutants that arise indicated by different colored uh, little cylinders here and then you just keep that process going. You keep serially passing the culture um, there are some different ways of performing ale. You can have a uh, chemostat where you're just continuously kept in the same flask. Um, but this is a good schematic. And as you do this, you get these mutant strains that will slowly um, fix in the population and the fitness improves over time. And then using DNA sequencing technology, uh, we can actually figure out exactly what mutations have happened in those strains that are letting them improve their fitness like this. So this is the ale process, and this particular paper we just published is a review article on the uses of ale for um, industrial uh, biotechnology for the most part. Uh, and we collected more than 150 different papers uh, that use ale to evolve microbes uh, for various purposes or to study various processes, um, and broke them down into various categories here, um, and then get into some case studies and examples that really highlight the way ale can be used to select for some property of interest you want. Yeah, so what we can learn from the review is that uh, you can leverage uh, ale for a number of applications, either inspired by these studies. Uh, we can understand what are the most uh, common applications of ale that have appeared so far and what uh, practical engineers and scientists are using the approach for. Uh, we can also better understand the process and how to set up a particular ale experiment for a desirable outcome. Uh, we talked a little bit about the future of ale uh, and where it's going in terms of uh, how it's changing given uh, a couple of new technologies and approaches in terms of um, both lab automation and sequencing and 
how those really enable ale to be a tool, um, uh, an efficient tool for use in industrial biotechnology. Um, we go over experimental design uh, as well, and you know what really fitness means in a number of applications. And fitness is a broad term, so there's survival of the fittest, uh, but it depends on the growth environment you're using. And so these different categories get into different sort of definitions of fitness uh, and uses of ale. So one is just improving the growth rate of cultures. Uh, you have microbes that grow faster, they're more productive if being used for some uh, industrial process because you don't have to wait as long for them to grow up. Uh, so that's a very broad use. Um, you can also increase tolerance to various compounds. So if you design a strain to produce some chemical and you want it to produce a lot of it, uh, in its natural environment, in the wild, it's not exposed to that chemical in high concentrations. And so often that will induce some stress uh, into the cell that causes it to grow poorly. And you can tolerize them through ale to get much better growing in the presence of a stress. You can also um, evolve strains to grow on a substrate, a, a nutrient source that they couldn't before. Uh, if that's accessible with mutations, that some of their enzymes can maybe be repurposed to now uh, metabolize this new substrate. You can also um, increase the yield of products in strains designed to produce something. That's a little more difficult. Uh, we get into that in the paper, some of the ways this is done. You can do targeted genetic engineering on strains to couple growth to production of this compound so that when you select for uh, improvements in fitness, they will also produce more of this compound. Uh, and then there's just a general discovery category as well where you can learn a ton by evolving strains and sequencing their DNA and seeing what those mutations are targeting for rate limiting systems that need to be improved. Uh, another a thing that became apparent when putting this review together is that there's a growing body of studies and an increasing amount of data being generated uh, for adaptive mutations uh, from lab evolution studies. Uh, so there is, uh, much like other fields of research in biological sciences right now, there's a growing amount of data and there's a need to you know, collect this data and associate it to the different um, phenotypes that we are seeing. So uh, going forward, groups like ours and other groups uh, we'll be focusing on putting together this information in an organized format that can be queried and better understand uh, both um, adaptive trajectories and how we can really use uh, lab evolution uh, to define parts uh, that can be used in synthetic biology and systems, um, systems engineering to um, engineer different uh, aspects and the strains that we're interested in.